There's a level of surrender that the end time church is going to begin to walk in. But the motivation for why we surrender is everything. I want to talk to you tonight about three forms of obedience, okay? It's on the screen, John 14, 15. It says this, if you love me, you will obey my commands. In other words, Jesus is saying, you obey me out of encountering love. I believe what has happened in a generation is we have preached obedience to God's word apart from intimacy. So the word of God has become a a list of do's and don'ts. And we want to, that's cool, we want to we want to beat people over the head. We, you, know, you know, come and get saved. And it's like, read this, brother, to find out what you shouldn't do and what you should do. Rather than introducing people to a love letter, whereas we fall in love with him, he begins to strip away all the other lovers. So out of Jesus' mouth... If you love me, it's not a threat, it's an invitation. If you love me, when you're in love with me, there's no fear. We were never meant to obey God outside of intimacy. But what we have in the church at large is many people who are doing their best to obey God, but the source of their obedience, God wants to speak to tonight. I have no reason to believe you're here on a Saturday night because you don't love Jesus. You love him. That's why you're here. But there's a day coming. There's sacrifices required. There's a surrender that he's looking for, but he wants us, he wants to help us get there. All right, let's look at the three stages of loving God. You can take pictures of this, you can write it down on your phone. Here's the three stages of loving God. Number one, fear based obedience. Fear based obedience. This obedience flows from the fear of suffering negative consequences for our sinful actions. This obedience is biblical, but such motivations will not enable us to consistently resist the pleasures of sin over a lifetime of temptation. You're going to meet people in your Christian journey. They're trying to obey God because they're afraid of going to hell. It's a fear base. They fear being distant from God. They fear being sent to hell. So they're attending church. They're, they're sort of doing the chameleon thing. They kind of try to fit in on a Sunday and sing the songs. And then they're doing whatever they want during the week. I mean, they're just, they're trying. They, they know God's real. They know there's a day. But they're serving him out of fear. When you serve God solely out of fear of consequences, when you're in that car alone with the girl, it won't keep your virginity. Just going to shoot you straight. When that temptation comes knocking on the door, just being afraid of hell or being distant from God won't keep you in the hour of temptation, but a hot Love affair with Jesus will. I literally, my wife and I stayed pure, not only through our entire lives, but our engagement. Why? We loved Jesus more than we loved each other. 
You, you remember when Joseph was tempted by Potiphar's wife and she said, come and lie with me. Listen to his response. His response to no to temptation, he says this, how could I displease the Lord? It wasn't about, oh, I couldn't do that to this, to my master. What would the guy's wife think? No, he had a love for God that delivered him in an hour of temptation. Oh, Oaks, I have a, maybe I'll break down and cry tonight. I was stuck as a pastor's kid under this ceiling of fear-based. Oh, God, I just want to love you, but I'm scared. I don't want to go to hell. I just lived under this ceiling, this limitation. I wanted to get free from staring at a computer screen. I wanted to get free from all of these things, and I just lived in these cycles for decades. Saints are living in sick cycles of sin for decades because they only know a fear-based obedience. We've got thousands of people. They'll never darken the doors of a church again because all they got is hell, fire, and brimstone. They never knew love. Let's go to the second one. Probably, I believe, what most people in the American church, or especially the Midwest, Midwest duty-based obedience. So you have fear-based, and now we have duty-based. It's on the screen there. It's obedience that acts out of obligation, but does not feel God's presence in the actions. Wouldn't it be great if you felt God every time you were supposed to obey? Some Pentecostal Christians live like that. They literally put themselves in compromising situations, especially with a guy or girl, and they're just expecting like the anointing to hit them so they keep their clothes on. I have counseled enough people that have fallen in sin to know we have got to learn how to obey God whether we feel it or not. This is biblical. I'm going to tell you if you're married, you need to love her or him whether you feel it or not. It's called a covenant, not a contract. I, I truly believe especially in the worship movement, we've set people up for failure because I'm convinced they're in love with the way that it makes them feel rather than they're in love with God. Just turn down the lights a little bit, get the fog machines going, play that note, hit that chord, put me in the mood. And I'm going to tell you in many places, I tell the worship team, sit down. Because if we can't make a conscious decision to repent and obey God with music, we're in danger of being in idolatry with music. So what happens when you go home? What happens when you're at the restaurant? What happens when you're at your house and well, I don't feel like I feel in church? So this duty-based obedience it's required that we obey God even when we don't feel inspired to do so. I mean, so many folks, they're just, they're in church because their parents told them to. They're just serving God because they're, especially in the Midwest. I don't know what it is about the Midwest and the Bible Belt. You're saved, I'm saved, we're all saved. You're a Christian, I'm a Christian, we're all Christians. There's more than just knowing it's the right thing to do. 
I'm telling you, when it comes to temptation, when it comes to following God, there's more than fearing him because you don't want to go to hell. There's more than just knowing, well, the preacher told me it's sin. There's a greater and a higher form of obedience to Jesus that will sustain you in a lifetime of facing temptation. Here it is affection-based obedience. This obedience, it flows out of encountering the love that Jesus has for us. It's getting so caught up as a daughter of the king that he loves me and I have found my identity in him that I don't have to go chasing after men any longer. It's allowing the love and the affection that Jesus has for us that in the Song of Solomon he writes, kiss me with the kisses of your mouth because your love is better than the wine of this world. What would it look like for you to become so in love with Jesus that what once tempted you now disgusts you? I mean, do you really believe that there's a place of encountering his love that it doesn't matter what's on your calendar and what time it is? The best example I can give you is when I met my wife. When I met my wife, I was a very busy bachelor. My calendar was full. But the moment she showed interest, it's this amazing thing happened. I was free. I went from unavailable, I went from solely focused in this direction and in this career path to the moment she showed interest, it was who, what, when, where, I, I, oh, I got to be in bed at 9 p.m. What in the world, I'm on the phone with her till 3 in the morning, night after night after night. What happened? I begin to experience a realm of encounter with her. There was a realm of affection that I experienced with her that began to overtake my excuses. It began to overtake my agenda. Folks, I'm telling you, God wants to come and encounter this generation in such a marvelous and fantastic way that it begins to overtake what you're even currently doing. There's a God of the Bible that will fascinate you more than your favorite Netflix more than your favorite Christian hobby. There's this love of God, this agape love, that when it gets down on the inside of us, everything changes. 